The train engine roars to life. Inside, a man sits comfortably in his seat, engrossed in his diary. He stares at the picture of Baron Eleanor Russell, knowing it's that woman again. On the other hand, a girl is shocked to see a creature coming out of a cracked egg. It squirms its way out and stretches its wing, revealing itself to be a dragon. They used to appear in the past. Now, they are only decorations at the back of an encyclopedia and cease to exist only in legends. Elinora didn't think a baby dragon would hatch from an egg she planned to fry and eat. Elinora is possessed by a body. The protagonist, Noah, transmigrated into a romance fantasy novel called Dragon's Head, which was well known for having a good start but a dull ending. Noah had no plan of transmigrating but, in fact, died from overworking. When she opened her eyes, she was roaming around the world and it stars as a ghost. She just so happened to find a dead body lying about, so she possessed it. The character she possessed was a powerful and evil villainess who could even surpass the strongest person in the world. Unfortunately, Noah came to know the world and her body's identity after she had perfectly adjusted to them. Knowing that she would be punished by the main leads in a few years, she ran off to the countryside. She just wants to eat and play while living quietly in this life. However, not knowing that this dragon has hatched, she recognizes it as the pet the heroine in the novel has. Originally, Lenia had picked up the dragon eggs and been imprinted by a baby dragon. However, it has ended with her now. Not wanting to get involved, she decided to return it. But the next day, it returned to her and, unfortunately, tried its best to cling to her. She uses a magic invention she found in Alina's diary to get the pet away from her. She picks it up and wonders how it came back. The next day, she returns it to the delivery services office. But the same thing happens to her this time as well. According to the original, when the dragon reaches the incubation period, it begins to form relationships with those who come into contact with it. And among them, it finds the human that it likes and does something known as imprinting. With the imprinted humans, the dragons can be humanized. Elinora is surprised by the dragon's rapid growth and wonders how such a precious egg ended up in the market. It might be that someone lost it. She asks the creature if it remembers who left it in Sorrento, but it just smiles adorably. In the original novel, the heroine, Lenia, who visited the Imperial Palace, accidentally dropped the egg and broke it. The dragon immediately imprinted itself on Lenia. Lenia is then pursued by Elinora, a force of evil wishing to covet the dragon's power, and so she allied with the male lead. However, the current Elinora has no desire to interfere with the original and wants to return it to its original owner. She feeds it, and it quickly falls asleep. Elinora smiles fondly at the sleeping angel. Rather than living with a lazy, dull person like her, she knew she'd be happier living with Lenia. At the Sorens security station, a purple-eyed man introduces himself as an investigator from Tezeba. He is from the Ajit Division and the head of the Investigation Security Department, shocking the front desk man. The man demands to read the case log about Baron Elinora. Realizing he's Kyle Leonard, the man reveals that the Baron hasn't caused any problems. Kyle then leaves, deciding to find her himself. She spots a woman with a child talking to a strange man and sees her exchanging the child. However, relaxing the man wasn't good news, the dragon fled. He realizes that Elinora might not like her since she has abandoned him five times by now. His attention diverts as Kyle asks if he lost his mother. The scene shifts to Elinora finding the dragon again at its doorstep. She angrily opens the door but finds it with a man. The boy starts crying, and Kyle asks if she is the one who abandoned this child. Elinora stares at the man with black hair and purple eyes. She instantly recognizes him as Kyle Leonard. He again asks if she abandoned the child. Kyle Leonard is the male protagonist of the novel. As far as she can remember, he is Duke Leonard's second son. He's a high-ranking government official who belongs to the investigative security department at Laurent. He is a genius investigator and the youngest to ever become a general manager. Above all, his specialty is standoffs. The witch, Elinora, was heavily involved in Laurent's crime scene and so held an awful hatred for him. The important reason she ran to the countryside was because of this man. The child clings to Elinora, pleading with her not to throw him away, and promising not to drink any milk. She is surprised to see him able to talk well. Kyle asks what her relationship with the child is, to which she says it's nothing. The child tearfully says master, shocking them both. She explains the situation, which Kyle calls child abandonment. Wanting to clear up the situation, she finds a rope and calls it towards her but it accidentally binds them both together, making them fall to the floor. She apologizes, to which Kyle says he must always keep his guard when with her since she doesn't know how to self-reflect. To his confusion, Elinora remains oddly quiet. 
he notices blood coming out of her nose. Elinora turns her head away, saying she just has low blood pressure and no longer has the energy to fight someone. He asks what she wants to say, to which she flicks her finger. A rolling pin floats towards Kyle and hits him hard behind his head, causing him to collapse to the floor. Elinora says she doesn't allow these kinds of dangerous items on her property. She slips out a gun after making sure he's unconscious. That night, she stared at Kyle, wondering if he would die from getting knocked out since she had accidentally hit him. The boy asks if she is okay, and Elinora suggests he never change back to his original form in front of that man. And from now on, he is forbidden to call her mistress. She wonders how she can raise a child. She was tired, and all she wanted was to rest by herself. The boy determinedly vows to protect her, shocking Elinora. He asks if she's troubled because of that human. He can do a good job, but Elinora refuses him. She remembers how, in the original, he barbecued Elinora and killed her. She is certain a murder might happen if he lets go of this kid, and she wants to make sure to teach him beforehand. She then promises not to throw him away if he isn't found out by the man, and she also makes him promise not to kill whoever he wishes, steal, or cause pain to others. The boy squeals in delight and accepts her condition. That night, Kyle successfully loosens the knots on his wrist. He notices how different Elinora's small house is from her lavish estate in the capital. Trying to find his belongings, he bumps into a sleeping figure of Elinora, making him wonder if it would be good if only she was as virtuous as she is beautiful. He is cut off from his thoughts as the boy asks him to stop. Kyle notices how he's grown up with better speech now. The boy threatens him not to touch Elinora. Noticing how strangely fast he grows, has no name, and uses weird titles like mistress makes him wonder if the boy could be a dragon. He knew he couldn't let it imprint on Elinora and decided to investigate in close proximity. The boy offers him a deal to make sure Elinora keeps him, and in turn, he won't kill Kyle. Kyle agrees. The next day, Elinora wakes up and instantly remembers that the male lead was in her house. She rushes outside and finds him sitting calmly, reading a newspaper. He asks her to write a statement regarding the child's abandonment and disappearance of Liz Avelsenior's egg. But Elinora refuses to admit that she has anything to do with the egg. He reveals that he came all this way on the orders of His Majesty to find her, the lead suspect and he's been issued a warrant to mark her closely. She tries protesting, but he reminds her of her reflection statement from two years ago, losing her right to refuse an investigation. He then decides to clean around her messy house. He confiscates and throws out many items, pissing her off. She sweeps faster, making him cough, hence, he kicks her out for a while. Soon enough, the house was spick and span. Suddenly, Elinora's head started aching badly, and her vision blurred, making her collapse to the floor. In her previous life, she was urged to work harder to make people acknowledge her someday. Elinora wakes up, and the boy immediately rushes by her side. However, Kyle pushes him back, asking him not to hug a sick person. He takes her temperature, takes her aback, and notices how she has a low fever. He checks her pulse and asks if she has overused her magical energy before but she hadn't made it all strange. He then leaves with the boy, asking her to rest. The next day, Kyle enters the house, and soon after, a doctor arrives whom he had previously called. The doctor does a checkup and reveals that Elinora is malnourished. Elinora reveals that cooking meat is too much of a hassle, after which the doctor declares the main cause of all her ailments is laziness. And it also seems her magical energy is twisted up within her body and is leaking out somewhere. The doctor then turns to Kyle, asking him to talk to his wife to help her improve her habits. The doctor then turns to the boy, revealing that he possesses the same magical energy she does and that usually, children with the qualities of a wizard absorb the magical energy within their mothers without knowing. Instantly realizing the root cause, Kyle and Elinora glare at the boy. Kyle knew Elinora's mana would be solved if she imprinted with the dragon since the dragon's mana would be absorbed into her. But he can't let this happen. He knew it would be catastrophic if she got her hands on the otherworldly power of a dragon. He asks who that kid is, and she says a three-year-old kid fell from the sky. Elinora wonders whether to go to the capital herself and help it imprint Lenia as the owner since her being the owner just doesn't make sense. Before she could suggest this to Kyle, he refused, saying she must do stamina training first, confusing her. He cooks up a delicious meal for her, after which she rests. Kyle then advises the boy that if he stays by her side, he'll drain all her mana, killing her. This shocks the boy, but he protests that imprinting will make it better. However, Kyle reminds him that Elinora has no intention of doing that, making the boy cry. Kyle picks him up, asking why he is obsessed with her. The boy reveals that Elinora hatched him from the egg. 
according to Kyle's investigation. Elinora hasn't left Sorrent for the past two years, but it makes no sense how she acquired an egg since it's impossible, even if she's a great witch. He wonders if there is an accomplice, someone who can approach the egg without triggering the castle's defense system. A man dreams of Elinora by his side. He wakes up, smiling, and remarks that he had a terrible nightmare. Meanwhile, Kyle wakes up Elinora and asks her to cook breakfast for her. She notices how hygienic he is and then turns to the boy. Noticing his swollen face, she asks if he cried, but he denies it. She also points out that he hasn't grown much either, but he says it's alright. She says it isn't and hugs him while Kyle stares at them. He takes the kid from her despite her protests and points out how she lost 10 pounds in two years. Surprised, she asks how he knows this. He says he knows everything about her, age, birthday, fingerprint, height, and weight. She calls him a creep, and he asks if she doesn't remember how much time they spent together despite her 15 criminal convictions. They decide to go on a walk, but to Elinora's surprise, the boy refuses to go. Later that night, he also refused to sleep with her. She finds him later in the night crying, and despite his denial, she takes him with her to bed. The next day, Elinora finds the boy back in his chair. She picks him up, waking him up in the process, and to her surprise, he pushes her away from him. He had been acting suspiciously since yesterday, and wasn't telling her why he was avoiding her, making her wonder if it was because of the imprint. She recalls that once a dragon imprints, it's for life. She wonders if she is prepared for the responsibility of being associated with a dragon in the future. She is cut off from her thoughts as Kyle angrily repeats that he asked if she had recent contact with Adrian Rossinal. She asks who that is, making Kyle ponder. He ends the investigation and leaves her with a grocery list. Seeing her stare at the boy, he sighs and decides to go with her. Later, when Alinora comes back home, she doesn't find the boy in sight. She panics and starts looking for him outside, but when a woman asks for his name, she is dumbfounded since he doesn't have one. She recalls the boy's desperate pleas not to abandon him and sulks, wishing he could have said goodbye. She wasn't okay with getting imprinted, but she did like living together. She leaves her room to find noise coming from a room. Back at the Sorrent police station, Kyle hurriedly demanded documents regarding Elinora. He was certain there were no errors in the information he knew about her. However, aside from her attitude towards someone else talking to her, she acted as if she couldn't remember the name of her four-year-long boyfriend, Minister of Magic, Adrian. But he knew she had no reason to lie and wondered who she was. As Kyle walked to her house, he wondered how the Elinora he knew definitely didn't have the traits the current Elinora has. Meanwhile, Elinora finds the source of the noise to be the dragon. Calling him baby, she immediately hugs him, saying she was worried he might be gone. Suddenly, Elinora's head started hurting and the boy advised her not to hug him. He confesses that she hates him, as she doesn't want to imprint on him, even if her body aches from not doing it. Elinora's eyes widen, and she clarifies that she doesn't hate him. She didn't want to imprint on him, but she likes staying with him. He was so cute and pretty, so she let him be by her side without committing to a decision. She apologizes for giving him false hope and asks if he wants to live with her. She extends a hand, which he reluctantly takes, causing him to instantly be transformed back into a human state, and they hug. Elinora wonders what to name the boy. She remembers how the female lead named him something, meaning the darkest night, but she didn't want to give him such an ominous name and decided to call him Mule, meaning clear, blue water. He excitedly remarks that he's happy she imprinted with him but gets interrupted as someone knocks on the front door. She makes her way to the door, noticing how the house is sparkling. She opens the door to see Kyle pointing a gun at her, asking if she's really Elinora Ussel. He asks her to do nothing but respond, reminding her what he did to her house. Elinora knew he cleaned her house by confiscating all her magic items and knowing the entire house structure. She wonders if it's a question for Noah or Elinora. She reveals that her real name is Park Noah. She reveals she was a 28-year-old office worker at an import company, and as for where she is from, he wouldn't know even if she told him since it doesn't exist in this world. He then asks where Elinor Essel is now, to which she reluctantly reveals she died but doesn't know what happened to her. He then asks where her original body is, to which she reveals it died too. Answering a few more questions, he suggests she cooperate, with which she immediately agrees. With no clear evidence, he wonders whether to believe her. He finally lowers the gun and notices the dragon imprint. Suddenly, Elinora begins to cough, a relieving feeling scratching her inside mindlessly, and she faints once again. She regains consciousness, and Kyle points out that she has a fever. Kyle picks Elinora up and lays her on her bed. At that moment, he decided to believe the untrustworthy woman. The scene switches to Kyle investigating Elinora and asking if she stole the dragon egg. 
Elinora denies it, saying she thought it was just an ordinary egg lying in the market. He reminds her of the responsibilities of imprinting, but she says she already knows. Kyle questions how to make Elinora ponder whether to tell him this is a fictional story. But knowing it'll be awkward, she lies reading about everything she wants to know. It is soon revealed that Kyle made a deal with Mule, but Kyle is also pissed that Elinora pretended to know nothing when she knew everything. He then checks on her magical power and concludes that she fainted because of the imprint. He then asks for Mule's hands, as he seems to be the cause of trouble. He then asks if she can attack him, confusing her even more. But she insists on not knowing how to use magical powers, so Kyle says there is a problem with imprinting since the magical powers are being blocked by something. He thinks there's an issue with the dragon, who hasn't been able to cut off its resonance with the other people who made contact with it. Remembering what Mule told him about the human voices he heard before hatching, Kyle asks him about them. Mule reveals it was similar to Elinora's voice, shocking her. In the novel, the first person to make contact with him is Lenia, and it might be possible that this is the case here. And so they decide to go find out who the humans are together. Kyle announces that he is returning to the capital soon to investigate the other suspects and advises Elinora to stay as quiet as possible in the meantime. He also plans to investigate whether the real Elinor was murdered or committed suicide. Elinora then leads Kyle to the place where she found Mule. They ask a woman from an egg shop, and she reveals she saw a young lady who asked her when the train was leaving for Tezeba a week ago. He asks Alina why she gave the dragon to the butcher back then. Seeing him address her as Baroness, she asks him to call her Noah and mentions that she gave the dragon to butcher since he was going to the capital. Kyle asks why, but she avoids the question. Kyle remembers her saying she wanted to return the dragon to its original owner, Countess Voltaller, and decides to investigate her once she returns to the capital. Later, Elinora returns home and sighs tiredly. Kyle takes his leave, saying that he knows there is something she didn't tell him, and he apologizes for all the things he did. He advises her to refrain from contacting the Countess or sharing information about Mule with others. She happily bids him goodbye, and Kyle leaves the house, smiling. He waits at the train station, awaiting the long journey. He opens his diary and adds Elinora's murder case to his list of investigations. He knew there would now be no reason for him to come back to this far-off countryside since Noah wasn't of any consequence to him. But if he solves the murder case, then perhaps he can meet her in her original form. He boards the train to find Mule and Elinora is also ready to go, saying they have to find the egg thief. Kyle smiles, knowing things will get bothersome from now on. The nine major provinces of the Laurent Empire consist of various districts distinguishable by their social importance. District 1 of Tezeba is where royals and high nobles reside. District 2 is Renidia, where low nobles or the upper middle class reside, and District 12 is a slum called Hyzen. As for where Mule, Kyle, and Elinor are headed, Lunazel is farthest from the capital and in an underdeveloped province known to be secluded. From there, they will take a train to Tezeba. On their way, Elinora gets to know she is the prime suspect in the egg stealing, and Kyle advises her not to let her guard down for one second since many are targeting her. Just then, a woman disguised as a salesperson approached their train, so Kyle alerted Elinora. He then walks out to apprehend her and brings her back inside, demanding to know who gave her orders and whether she belongs to Ulam. Elinora recalls Ulam as an underground organization hired to steal dragons. Upon threatening, the woman reluctantly reveals she meant no harm as she was already ordered to observe the face. However, she was unable to reveal more since there was a self-destructive device near her head preventing her from leaking information about her employer. Kyle reveals it to be an early invention of Elinor Russell. He then asks her to trust him and tell him the information she still hasn't told him. She hesitatingly asks him to trust her and reveals that there is a book containing the story of this world. She then reveals the story and how the male leads Relenia and him, taking him aback. The novel concludes as Lenia's dragon kidnaps her and leaves for the other world. Kyle calmly reveals he has never seen Lenia and remarks that there seems to be a strange person in the world where Noah lived to be making an absurd novel using someone else's name. She asks him not to think too seriously, as she doesn't know if Lenia is the real egg thief since the story completely changed at the point of Elinora's death. They finally arrive at Lunazel Station, and Kyle advises her not to take the hat off since Elinora Assel is quite a celebrity. But Elinor approves a more certain way, and she ends up going in disguise, shocking Kyle. She suggests staying a night here, but he says it will make no difference as the surveillance is focused here. He decides to evade them by making them go on different trains that depart at the same time. People in search of the Baroness will follow her, and as soon as she enters, she must make herself invisible using Mule's magic. 
and then, upon Kyle's signal, she must move to the ninth partition for him. As per the plan, Alina reveals her identity and does what Kyle tells her to. She finally approaches him, and they decide to move from there. However, suddenly, somebody aims for her neck, but Kyle avoids the blow. Kyle reveals that the opponents must be magicians to aim for her despite the invisibility spell. He then decides to dump the initial plan and move on top of the train, despite Alina's protests not to. Alinora goes first, however, an opponent finds her and raises his gun at her. But before he can fire, Kyle comes to her aid and shoots the man. He finally manages to bring Alinora and Mule to another compartment but refuses to follow, saying they should travel separately for now. Alinora becomes shocked, but Kyle continues to say that he will see her in four days, around noon, at Baduanu Station. Now that she's alone, she's scared. Coming all the way here was tough, but she agreed nonetheless. Kyle smiles and wishes her all the luck. The scene switches to Kyle successfully destroying the opponents. He walks out and confronts a man. He shoots him and demands to know where the train is going, as it isn't the way to Lunazel. With further torture, the man finally reveals it is heading to the Magic Division, an operation to capture Elinora, not kill her, since it makes no sense to Yulam. Kyle realizes Yulam wasn't the one who killed Elinora and wonders who in the Magic Division is behind this operation. It made no sense why they were acting just now after Elinora left for Sorrent after remaining quiet for the last few years. It would make sense if the figure behind the operation case was also behind the Baroness murder. It might mean that the one who assassinated Elinora Assel knows that the current Elinora isn't the former one. Thus, the murderer uses Yulam to capture Noah, who wears Elinora's body. He lands a last punch and walks out. He thinks of Noah and wonders if she is safe, but she shrugs it off, reminding him that it isn't his concern. His subordinates rush to him, saying they received an emergency report from a passenger on a train. Kyle realizes it must be Noah, and he chuckles. He orders an investigation into the relationship between Yulam and the Magic Division. Meanwhile, Alinora thinks of Kyle and wonders whether they will be able to safely reunite. That night, she finds Mule looking at the stars and says it looks like what he saw in the egg, piquing her curiosity. Park Noah, who worked in an office non-stop, never thought to look at the sky, and would have never thought to see such a pristine night sky. Suddenly, there's a knock on their cabin door, and she asks who it is. The voice says it is their passenger cabin, and they wish to share it with her. She reluctantly opens the door to find an elderly woman with a hooded man. She is flustered to see his handsome face, but she is surprised to see the man call her Ellie and ask what those funny glasses are. The elderly lady had also disappeared, and the man revealed it was just some elementary magic. The man holds her hand, saying he will be sad if she cuts him off. She coldly glares at the man and asks who he is, taking him aback. He reveals that he is her friend and lover. He is his savior and the person who knows her best in this world, probably even more than Kyle Leonard. She reveals that she has forgotten many things and has no memories of him. The man suggests she might be pretending to not remember, or she might be someone else living in Alinora's body. Angry, she casts magic and kicks him out of the cabin. The next day, when Alinora walks out of her cabin, she spots the man from last night outside. She ignores him while he continues babbling, pissing her off. She asks Mule to get rid of the man for her, and he does. By sunset, Alinora has found an inn, and she wonders about Kyle. She connects to the Security Investigation Bureau and successfully manages to talk with Kyle. He reveals he cannot come since magic was cast on the local railway and that the terror attack from yesterday involved the magic department. He asks her to go to the city and there is no need to worry since the police are watching. She asks him to come as soon as she misses him and immediately hangs up, leaving Kyle blushing. The next day, they continued their journey, but to Elinora's annoyance, the man clung to her. He reveals his name is Adrian making her feel like she had heard his name before. She remarks that his name is uselessly pretty. She recalls that they broke up two years ago after having a huge fight in front of the royal palace. She advises him to give up since she isn't the person he knew long ago, but he still insists on a chance. And so Alina allows him to follow her if he wants if he takes care of those monitors for her. They soon reach Baduanu, and Alinora is amazed by the beautiful town. Adrian was still clinging to her, angering Mule. Elinora decides to go to the hospital first and then stop by the guard post to contact Kyle. Then they'll leave tomorrow. She is distracted by the continuous vibration from Adrian's pager, and he says many people are looking for him. She wonders just who he is. She tilts her head toward him, curiously asking why they broke up. Adrian blushes and reveals that just because she forgot doesn't mean the things she did to him will go away. He asks her to stop being so heartless and asks if there is any other man in the world who loves her more than him. 
This makes her hesitate. She wonders whether Adrian might be related to Eleonora's murder case and decides to talk to Kyle later about this. To Eleonora's dismay, all railway station operations have been suspended. Meanwhile, Mule closely observes Adrian. They decide to stay at a luxurious hotel for the time being. It's been four days now, and Eleonora has caught a cold again. Mule nervously goes down to the lobby and makes a call. Adrian, who watches him closely, makes his way up to Eleonora's room and finds her asleep. He knows there is no way she is the woman in his memories. Realizing she's sick, he decides to get her a wet towel. However, Eleonora unconsciously stops him, thinking he's Kyle. He leans toward her, wondering just how close they are. She decides to wash up, shocking Adrian. Meanwhile, Mule talks to Kyle on the phone, who asks him not to cry and to let Noah sleep, saying that he'll arrive around noon. He walks back to the room to find Adrian. He asks him to keep walking and leave, to which Adrian remarks that he's honored to meet him, the dragon. Eleonora, who has overheard this, asks how he knew it. But Adrian sees her take mana suppressor pills and asks if she didn't completely imprint with him. Eleonora immediately orders Mule to throw the man out, and he complies. Adrian decides to keep observing them, as it'd be better to take away the imprint before it's completed. The scene shifts to Eleonora and Mule at a cafe, reading about the absence of the Minister of Magic. It is hard to get a ferry ticket right now since many people are stuck because of the suspension of railways. Wondering when her headache will go away, she gets distracted as Adrian approaches her. She takes immediate action and drags him away to the guard post. Adrian apologizes, but she pays no heed. But unfortunately, she was stuck there too since she used unauthorized rope magic. She has to reveal her true identity to the police and vent her anger at Adrian. Soon, a man enters, asking if she still hasn't gotten rid of her cold. Eleonora's eye widens as she spots Kyle. They exchange a few words, and then Kyle turns to Adrian, addressing him as a minister, and asks why he is here after not responding to their calls for the past few days. Eleonora realizes this and becomes surprised. She reveals to Kyle that he told Adrian she has amnesia, and he seems to buy it. They get interrupted as Adriana asks when the two of them got so close, as from what he remembers, he was going crazy since he couldn't find her. They insist that they aren't close, making Adrian glare. Eleonora angrily kicks Adrian, asking why he's being nosy. Adrian remarks that if she acts this cold-hearted, he might say something. Realizing what he meant about Mule, she threatens to burn him to a crisp if he spreads this. But he doesn't take the bait and strikes a deal with her to let him meet her once a week in Tezeba, and in turn, he'll teach her how to use the dragon's magic power. She decides to think about it. Adrian kisses her on the cheek, and suddenly, Kyle drops a cup, his eyes widening. Adrian takes his cue to leave before Eleonora gets mad. Later, Kyle reveals to her that they will move tomorrow via ferry. Eleonora reminds him she's seasick, but he decides to come with an antiemetic. She remarks that he can sleep in her room, shocking Kyle. She burst into laughter, saying she was just joking, pissing him off. The next day, they made their way to the ferry. As they make their way to their rooms, they overhear the name Voltaller. Eleonora takes out one of the Baroness's inventions, called Largo's Eyeball. On the monitor, she overhears the men's conversation and realizes that Lenia is also on the boat, despite her being investigated in the city since she took the train to Tezeba. A woman arrives, but before they can see her face, she kicks the eyeball away. Kyle confirms that Lenia is in the city and has secluded herself at her mansion for five days. But they can't be sure since her father just mentioned her. One thing is clear, Lenia seems aware that they are watching her as she kicks the eyeball. They think Lenia might not be the egg thief, but it seems she's hiding something. Kyle decides to issue an arrest warrant against Lenia as soon as they reach the port. He then asks Eleonora to sue Mule's power if she gets into trouble since her safety is the most important. Later, Kyle makes his way through an empty corridor. An unidentified man picks up the eyeball and smirks, saying he finally found it. It had been an entire day by now, and Kyle still hadn't returned, making Eleonora nervous. Mule tried finding him using his magic too, but to no avail. She decides to look for Kyle herself. Instead, she bumps into a woman who advises her that it isn't safe for her to be out alone. The blonde locks, blue eyes, and small stature indeed represented Lenia Voltaller. She blurts out, asking if she stole the dragon egg, causing Lenia to flinch. Lenia tremblingly remarks that there's only one way up, the emergency exit used only by the crew, and that the ferry isn't safe. She knew she couldn't stand against them, but she could since she gave the dragon to her. Lenia reveals she saw that man drop a wire-tapping device on the ground. She kicked it aside as soon as she saw it. She says she'll be killed if she's caught. She then leaves, asking her to come tomorrow to room 409 in the afternoon. She determinedly decides to save Kyle. 
They sneak out through the dark corridor and head to the balcony. They notice the boat has stopped and wonder who did this. They finally reach the lift, and to her surprise, she notices the crew buttons appearing when they didn't a while ago. The first floor button that appeared out of nowhere, and the code-like words Lenia spoke, all feel like they are luring them down. Despite this, she presses the button. They soon arrive and find traces of blood as well as bullets. Mule senses it isn't Kyle's blood and asks Elinor to focus more, as she will be able to feel the trajectory of magic power. Suddenly, they hear the sound of a lift, causing them to hide immediately. However, someone reaches for her and puts a hand on her mouth. The voice asks him to be quiet, and she realizes the man is Kyle. They hear distant voices and scraping metal, but the coast soon becomes clear. She tells him he has been here for a day and a half, and she comes to know that it was him who stopped the boat. They decide to go back, but Kyle says he has to take care of one more guy and that they should go first. He advises her to take medicine since Mule's neutralizing magic on the door might take a toll on her body. She agrees while Mule sniffs the air and ponders. Elinora hurries away while Mule continues to smell blood. She hurries to find Lenia but cannot help but ponder that something is off. While Mule tries neutralizing the magic, Kyle takes pictures. A man approaches him, ordering him to hand the camera over. When he denies it, the man orders his gang to kill him. Suddenly, Mule and Alina hear a bang. But thinking he was fighting that man, she kept running to meet Lenia. They finally reach her and break the resonance. Alina's heartbeat and breathing finally stabilized. Meanwhile, Kyle had defeated all the men and came face to face with a masked man whom one called his master. Seeing Alina's immense strength, Lenia trembles and backs away. Realizing she isn't fit to speak, Alinora leaves, leaving Lenia to hope that the Baroness will top him. The people soon spot Alinora and tremble at the sight of her. Alina stares at the sky and decides to go up. People watch her fly shockingly. She asks Mule to help Kyle. Meanwhile, Kyle wonders if he's hallucinating. He finally comes to his senses as he spots the dragon. Kyle watches the criminal run away, but he immediately shoots him while Mule swallows him. Kyle calls for him and asks him to sit it out. He does so, and as Kyle had expected, the man was only fragments of machinery. He wonders if it's such high-level confusion magic that even Elinora Assel struggled with it. It's not a power Ulam minions will possess. Meanwhile, Adrian remarks that nothing good will come out of having a power she can't even control. He decides to get rid of them all one by one, including the woman who wears the body of Elinora. He then asks Lenia if she knows nobody will notice if she dies here. He tortures her, while she says someday they will. He then leaves the room and disguises himself as a crew member again. Meanwhile, Elinora was still unable to handle her powers. On the other hand, Kyle struggles to shrug off his instinct to be repulsed when he sees the Baroness's face, despite knowing the person inside her body isn't her. They soon arrive in the capital. They are greeted by the investigative bureau guards. Kyle's subordinate, Penelope, has a vehicle waiting for him. But before Elinora can follow Kyle, Penelope requests that she disarm herself. Hearing this, Mule glares at Penelope, causing her to flinch. Kyle shields them, saying he's safe, and warns Penelope not to provoke the Baroness. As they drive their way through the city, Kyle takes Mule from her to prevent him from provoking further magic. Mule fondly hugs him tightly, causing Kyle to blush, saying he likes the people Noah likes. An awkward silence surrounds the air. Elinor remarks that it seems easier for her to control her powers now. They finally arrive at the Bureau. Elinor had noticed how people feared her, making her wonder just how psycho the Baroness was and why Adrian seemed to like her. Suddenly, the Minister of Finance approaches her. He insults her, saying he is a woman who knows no shame and is impudent. Soon, the Imperial Emperor also arrives, and anxiously, she fails to greet him, which the Finance Minister also scolds her for. She becomes enraged and wonders whether to kill him. But before she can do something, Kyle grabs her hand, bringing her back to reality. The Emperor sides with her, warns the minister to respect her, and leaves. Elinor sighs, realizing things could have gone downhill. Kyle suggests staying apart from Mule for a while, and she agrees, but Mule protests. She assures him she'll come back to him, and he agrees. Kyle shows Elinor her room, and then he orders his subordinate to check the evidence video. Penelope watches the video and is shocked by what she sees. The next day, Elinora is interrogated by Kyle himself. On her way, she sees Lenia and is shocked to hear she was declared innocent. But to her shock, Lenia refused to remember anything at all. She again thinks of killing her but is brought back to reality by Kyle. She enters the interrogation room with him while Penelope suspiciously watches her. Elinora becomes uncomfortable seeing recorders. Kyle begins by asking about her relationship with Lenia and what motivated her to threaten her on the ferry. He provides evidence of her entering Lenia's room without permission and trying to harm her. 
Alinora wonders if Kyle really believes this or if he's just putting on a show in front of everyone else. He then asks why she tried contacting Ulam with the stolen dragon. Alinora is shocked to see that Kyle isn't on his side. Unable to control her emotions, the table starts trembling. Kyle swiftly taps her leg and continues to say that she was able to take the egg, restore the central mana deceived to its original state, and return to Sorrent. She tries to deny it, but Kyle taps her leg again, making her realize what's happening. She says there wasn't any accomplice, and the reason she imprinted with the dragon was because he was cute. She continues to admit the accusations he made, but it seems unfair to her. The recording soon finished, and Kyle turned the recorders off. He praises her for working hard, but she begins to cry, calling him annoying. She says he is the only one who knows about her and trusts her. She decides to leave angrily, but Kyle stops her and apologizes. They sat down again, and Alinora asked what happened to Lenia. It turns out that Lenia refused to confess and is consistently playing dumb. And Lenia or her stand and never entered the palace on the day the egg disappeared. He reveals that after Lenia's statement, he was ordered to restrain her. He reveals the trial is just a formality, and she won't be sentenced if she accepts the charges. But in turn, she is obliged to write self-reflection papers. Suddenly, Kyle is called through the intercom, but the person on the other end shrugs it off as nothing. He decides to go up and see what's the matter, but Alinora insists they go together. He agrees, and she fastens her pace. He stares at her, realizing he unintentionally hurt her. He asks if she always looked like that, to which she reveals she originally had brown hair. He suddenly realizes that if she gets her original body back, she might have to go back, but he doesn't want this to happen. They soon exit the room, unaware of the hidden evidence under the table. Meanwhile, Penelope hears their conversation, and she is confused to her core. She decides to stay silent for now and asks the chief later about everything. She locks the device in a box, and suddenly there is a knock on the door. It was Adrian who asked her to contact the interrogation team since he wanted to meet the chief. Seeing his chance, Adrian steals the evidence and leaves. Kyle had advised Alinora to answer the questions just like she had memorized them and asked her to focus on staying calm. The trial begins, and Alinora says what she memorized, hoping to return to Sorrent with Mule soon. The trail is about to end, but to Alinora's surprise, Adrian enters as a witness. He calls Alinora incapable of handling dragon mana and ends up sentencing her to several years of community work. However, Kyle interfered on time and asked the judge to give him the authority to supervise her from that day forward. She later confronts Adrian, who reveals that the malice thoughts that flood her mind nowadays are because of her cute little dragon. He touches the restraint on her neck and suggests she learn restraint from him. By sunset, Kyle approaches her, and she embraces him, overwhelmed by the trial. Mule later apologizes for causing trouble. Knowing she didn't do a good job of changing Mueller, she requests that Kyle take him with him on a tour of the palace so he can learn societal rules and morals well. They soon arrive at Alinora's residence. The sensor outside detects them all. Kyle begins to take his leave, but Alinora insists on him coming inside just for an hour. He remembers her words from before and agrees. She washes up, and they sit for dinner. She had never eaten warm food, even when she was younger. But now there's Kyle. She blurts out, asking him to live with her or at least teach her how to cook. He notices the wound on her neck from the restraint and puts ointment on it, causing her to blush profusely. The scene fast forwards to 20 days later. Arian is frustrated to see Elinora using attack magic consistently. The magic security personnel notice how much Elinora has changed and wonder why. One concludes that it's because of love for the minister. Later, Alinora reads about mana being a dense power that spans across the entire universe. She reads about how there are universes besides the one where they exist. To become a magician, one has to either have sensitivity to mana or be born with it. For now, Adrian is the only person from whom she can learn to control her overflowing mana. Later, she realizes that, no matter how she looks at it, Adrian seems suspicious. Kyle is pissed that she has been avoiding him for the past few days and wonders why. But Alinora hesitates to respond. Kyle soon leaves with Mule, but he stops him. Kyle apologizes for fighting in front of him, and Mule reveals that Alinora doesn't want her to go. He reveals that she gets troubled if he gets closer, but she doesn't like it when he leaves. The next day, Kyle brings Alinora to the bureau to see the robot-like corpse. He shows her lowercase r behind its ears and says he found a human among the gang with an uppercase r, meaning it distinguishes between real and fake humans. He then shows her a voice recording of that human, revealing that the Ministry of Magic consists of big shots. Kyle then reveals that the only individual he considers to be a big shot in Ulam is Adrian. He decides to investigate him since he might also know Noah isn't really Elinora. 
she also decides to find things since she has lessons with him. He then reveals that he's going on a trip soon to a place where mana stones are found. They are said to make the human machines and advise her to be careful while he's gone. Just then, Penelope enters, saying the doctor has come to look at his wound. She immediately leaves after seeing Eleonora, leaving her shocked. She is now angry at him for hiding his injury and is upset that he doesn't trust her that much. He apologizes but gets interrupted as Eleonora asks him to take his clothes off. He reluctantly complies and takes his shirt off, revealing the wound. But before she can reach out for it, Kyle pushes her away. The next day, Kyle is demoted to Edmund temporarily since love rumors about him and the Baroness spread. Penelope swears to not have leaked the contents, and amid her sentences, she reveals Adrian also came to her office. The scene switches to Elinora bumping into a rather strange Lenia. She caresses her face, and to her shock, she notices the R sign behind her ear. She instantly realized what had happened. She hurries to let Kyle know that Lenia in the capital is a fake but is stopped by Penelope who informs her the chief has already left for Edmund. Meanwhile, Kyle had decided to get off the train mid-route. His subordinate warns him he will lose his job, but he assures him he has already found a job as a butler. Meanwhile, Penelope had informed Elinora of everything that had happened. Elinora was now determined to investigate. She takes her chance to sneak out during a class and heads to the library, finding books on replica theory. She wanders more and finds an empty coffin named Replica Project with Adrian. The scene shifts to Kyle moving to the large mana stone mine, Malviana. A few days later, Elinora follows there too, and finds that Kyle also visited. It turns out he has struck a deal to buy a mine. Elinora talks to the owner, and he reveals that deep down in the developed mine exists a monster that is responsible for the disappearances of the miners. Elinora insists on buying the mine for four million and hands him the check. He reads the name on it and is shocked to see who she really is. She asks him to forget Kyle and make a deal with her instead. She later decides to go home. She takes a carriage, unaware that it is for miners, resulting in her ending up at a mine. There, she meets Kyle, and she informs him of the news regarding Lenia. She and Mule follow him to the Mana Lake, and they swim their way to the other side. There, Elinora notices a sound coming from a dark cave and is shocked to see a figure reaching for her. Kyle and Mule have now lost Elinora to the pitch black darkness. They soon spot her complaining that her clothes got all dirty. Kyle notices how her collar is gone and she is covered in blood. She reveals that someone tried attacking her, so she killed him. Her eyes soon widen in realization as she finally realizes what she really did try to do. Guilty, she begins healing him. Meanwhile, Mule reveals that the fairies are saying they didn't want humans to tear away at the nest left to the dragons, so they captured and locked them up. As they make their way to the captured miners, a fairy urges Noah to go back to her original body, as it isn't dead. If it was, she wouldn't have memories of her previous life. The fairy asks her to go to the birthplace first because all the strange things happening here are related to it. They finally reach the birthplace of dragons and found the miners, who revealed that the owner of the mine deals mana stones with dealers. Elinora and Kyle realize the dealers must be from Ulam. Kyle reveals that this might result in the confiscation of the mine and the owner might end up in prison for two decades. She reluctantly reveals to Kyle that she bought the mine. This infuriates him, and he scolds her for doing that. Elinora prepares to go, and Kyle suggests coming if she's scared, but she refuses. He advises her to come back right away if she thinks she is in danger since her safety is the main priority. His words cause her cheeks to redden, and she goes up with Mule to the passage that connects the world. The fairy appears before her again and advises her to go wherever her feet take her, as they'll draw her from there. Mule asks what kind of place she used to live in, but Elinora shrugs it off, saying it was nothing special. Her parents were only interested in her younger brother. She thought she did well in college and worked a good job. Her parents would love her too, so she put everything behind her and grasped for recognition but to no avail. She opens her eyes to see that she has really returned as Noah. A nurse enters the room and informs her she has been unconscious for months, yet her body condition is great. She is discharged from the hospital and goes back with her mother. She ponders how there's nothing here like having your life threatened or crawling atop a moving train. She remembers Kyle and sulks. Suddenly, a bright light shines, indicating that it is Mule. Mule asks what she wants, to live here or see Kyle. That night, Noah leaves the house, telling her mother she doesn't have to look for her as she'll be happy and healthy from now on as she finds something she likes. She then takes Newell grocery shopping. Meanwhile, Kyle was worried sick about her since it's been three days already. He sulks, thinking she might never return. 
He is cut off from his thoughts as Noah approaches him with flowers, calling him Butler. The scene switches to them all on their way to Torin. Kyle explains to Mule that he captured the Ulam dealers, who revealed that the mana stones were being hoarded there. He then asks why Noah is sleeping too much, to which Mule reveals that the fair said it'd take time for her to get used to her original body. Meanwhile, Mule had put Alinora's body in a pocket dimension. They tried finding her soul but to no avail. He then asks about her life there, but Mule says not to tell anyone, not even Kyle. He stares at the bouquet, recalling how Noah said it reminded her of his eyes. They take the carriage next in order to avoid others tracking their whereabouts. He then asks Noah if she acted in a way suspicious of Adrian but she says she didn't. He then asks why she's wearing a chemise dress. She reveals that Alinora's clothes didn't suit her current body, so she just came out in a chemise dress. She notices how he hasn't made eye contact with her at all, making her wonder if he doesn't like Park Noah at all. Meanwhile, Kyle thinks of how cute and beautiful she is. He thinks of what those short pants were, and it was tricky for him to direct his eyes. He shrugs the thought off and decides to find an inn when they reach but he still couldn't stop thinking of what those pants were. They soon arrive and check in at an inn, deciding to look through the factory situation first. But to Noah's shock, Kyle books separate rooms, making her angry. She wonders if she is really of no importance to him, especially since she left her previous life because of him. She telepathically talks to Mule about having the option to go back, just in case. Mule, who is with Kyle, tells him this, shocking him. He decides to talk to her and rushes towards her room. Noah approaches her. He becomes speechless to see her state and immediately closes the door, asking her to get dressed first. Later, Noah still hadn't left her room, making Kyle wonder if she was mad at him for changing his attitude after her appearance changed. He approaches her room to apologize, and Noah lets him in. She remarks that she abandoned her hometown and came here, but it isn't going that well. Kyle knows he should tell her it's okay if she wants to go, but he really doesn't want to. Noah continues that, despite everything, she chose this place because of him. He is kind and helpful to everyone, does his job well, and, at the very least, she thought he liked her too. This shocks Kyle as he realizes she knew all along and wonders if he confesses to her, will she accept? But he ended up saying nothing. Kyle informs Noah the next day that Adrian is in the capital, but it seems oddly quiet. He plans to leave to send a telegram to his subordinates and advise Noah to buy some clothes. She leaves to shop and senses something odd. She leaves the shop after buying clothes and asks Mule if they are still following her, which he confirms. She uses invisibility magic, but it gets figured out as a man accidentally pours paint over her dress. She has no choice but to try using teleportation. She asks the fairy to tell Kyle to come see him, and they then disappear into thin air. They find themselves near the outskirts of District 13. She immediately senses a bad atmosphere and decides to go through it using invisibility magic. She smells something rotten in the nearby water. It was waste from a nearby factory. Mule sensed mana from it, making her wonder whether the factory produces magic devices. Before they can investigate, Mule senses something coming towards them, and they decide to hide. She wonders how someone might know who she is. A sudden realization dawns on her, and she instantly takes out the Largo eyeball. She recalls how its other pair was kicked away by Lenia and she had completely forgotten about it. She wonders if the person who happened to pick it up was tracking her with this. She opens it to see a pitch black image. It felt like she was looking straight at the person and vice versa. This makes her realize that whoever is following her is after her, not Elinora. She hands Mule the eyeball and asks him to give it to Kyle. She decides to send the pursuers to Kyle and Mule, as they will be able to handle them. Meanwhile, she walks through the strange town and finds a sign directing towards a guard post. She arrives at a creepy-looking hotel, thinking it might be a guard post. Disappointed, she begins to leave, but it begins to rain heavily. Soon, villagers begin to rush past her, saying to hurry before the lake overflows again. She enters the hotel to find it lavishly furnished and people happily gambling. Suddenly, she notices an R mark on a man but it has a cross on it. She checks every other person's ears and finds that most people have the same symbol. She decides to look for staff, but there are none. She recalls how dirty and poor the village and its residents were. Hence, it doesn't make sense for them to frequent such a big hotel. She realizes it is the place they have been looking for all along, a location most suitable for forbidden research to take place. She is cut off from her thoughts as Adrian approaches her. Back in the continental year 578 spring, Alinora Essel was working together with Adrian on a replica project. Despite Adrian's attempt to suggest she focus on other projects, the replica project was way too important to her. She complained about their world being too slow, terrible, and boring. 
she confesses that a genius like her shouldn't be left with only two decades. That was one thing even Adrian agreed with. Back in the present, Noah asks Adrian if he made the hotel. He agrees and says that the only one who can display magic on a large scale is him or Eleonora. She swarms him with a series of questions and asks if he's real. He takes out a knife and slits his palm to prove he's real. He reveals that he didn't kill Eleonora. Instead, her attempt to create humans led to her tragic demise. Adrian tried telling her that it couldn't be done, but this infuriated Eleonora Assel to no extent. Adrian then asks Noah where she put Eleonora's body. His face seemed sad, making Noah realize that he really loved Eleonora. She tells him it's with Mule, but he cannot access it. Adrian smiles and puts her to sleep. Meanwhile, Kyle discovers that Adrian is creating replicas. He resorts to torturing a man to find Adrian's whereabouts and ends up in Harrell. Mule reveals he transported Noah to a place she wanted to go, making Kyle realize it was their destination. Adrian's laboratory. Mule detects traces of the magic Noah used and guides Kyle there. On the other hand, Adrian is shocked to see that hypnosis magic isn't working on Noah. Noah vows to protect Mule and uses magic to restrict him to one place. She then promises to hold him accountable for his actions and makes her way up. It was extremely dark, so she casts magic to illuminate her path. But what she finds next shocks her. The floor is swarmed with experimental failures. They were conscious and asked her for help. She assures them help is coming, and a body warns her to look behind. Noah instantly avoids the attack and shoves the replica away. Using Mule's power, she commands the replica to drop the knife and lead her to the factory. Inside, she finds a chaotic room with a diary that seems to belong to Adrian. It stated why Ellie isn't being nice to him and always hits him. One diary entry included his breakup with Eleonora. He had confronted her once again to not try creating the impossible tearfully. But Alina couldn't care less about how he felt. Adrian couldn't stop thinking about Eleonora, even after their breakup. An hour before their breakup, Adrian's subordinate discreetly revealed to him that the Baroness was experimenting with soul separation and using a drug on herself to weaken the bond between body and soul. He knew he was nothing compared to the great Eleonora Assel and vowed to move on. But in the end, he found himself drawn back to Eleonora's mansion. He saw Lenia visiting at a late hour and became curious. They hug each other, causing Lenia to blush and go back inside. The next day, he went back to her mansion but found her collapsed on the floor. Adrian tries to wake Eleonora with awakening magic, but she doesn't respond. As he tried to find the sole nucleus to wake her up, he found a replica of Eleonora instead. He gets distracted by Lenia, who appears out of nowhere. Adrian realizes Eleonora must have given her permission to come and go. Lenia asks him to call someone for help but halts as she sees blood on his hand. Thinking he killed her, she reveals he must have been jealous of them. Adrian became shocked and hurt once again. He knew if he woke Eleonora, she would continue mistreating others. And when the other person begs for forgiveness, she will smile down as if forgiving them for their wrongdoings. He knew that if Eleonora was selfless and moral, then everyone must have been better off. A sudden idea strikes his mind, and he plots to reverse their damned relationship. On the other hand, Lenia blames him for holding the Baroness back. He reminds her that Eleonora sacrificed many people for this, but Lenia remarks that sacrifices are involved when developing new technologies. Adrian sighs, leans closer to her, and says she's right that sacrifices are necessary. Eleonora's soul was damaged, so the laboratory needed time to supplement the soul. Lenia, on the other hand, was locked up. Noah further reads that replicating the soul is difficult, so Adrian decided to attempt segmentation rather than replication. The diary had several entries containing how many experiments had failed. Adrian finally concluded that it wasn't possible with human power alone, making Noah realize that it was Adrian who stole the dragon egg all along. But then did Lenia steal it from Adrian and bring it to her? She decides to keep the diary for now and hand it to Kyle as evidence. Suddenly, she hears a commotion outside and finds Lenia alive in one of the rooms. Lenia asks who she is, making Noah realize that she is in her original body form. Noah tells her she came here to help her and notices how close she is to death. She uses first aid to make Lenia's condition better and she then pleads to take her with her. Noah agrees and they make their way through the dark corridor. Suddenly, Noah hears a sound echoing through the building. She turns back to see Adrian demanding to get the dragon and Eleonora. She realizes there must be more replicas of him. Knowing she can't break the magical wall, Noah asks Lenia to run away first since she will just get in the way of fighting. Lenia agrees and rushes down the stairs, deciding to call for help. Noah faces Adrian, reminding him that Mule won't lend his strength to anything she doesn't approve of. 
but Adrian reveals to her that she is the dragon's fatal weakness. Having personally chosen her, the dragon holds her dear, and once Adrian secures her, he'll be able to enlist the dragon's cooperation. No one knows this Adrian is a replica since the real one was on the first floor, and he decides not to hold back. Kyle and Mule arrive at the burning hotel. Before they can go in, Linia makes her way out. Kyle asks if she saw Noah inside and gives her Noah's description. Linia recognizes her and reveals that she is in danger as Adrian is going to kill her. Suddenly, a blinding green light surrounds the hotel. Linia points up to Noah. Adrian begins to take control of her magic and apologizes for doing this, saying he needs a Lenora. Kyle tries shooting him from below but to no avail. Meanwhile, Noah could feel what Adrian felt and thought. He was obsessed with getting recognition from Alinora and did his best to try harder, but she didn't care at all. Noah regains consciousness and grabs Adrian's hand. She then tells him that people like Alinora never have the intention of loving someone, no matter how great the other person is. She suggests he likes someone who knows how to love someone, but Adrian says it's easy for her to say since she has the luxury of people who love her but he has no one who loves him. Noah remarks that she will then love him, shocking him. Suddenly, the magic barrier breaks and Noah praises Mule for doing well. She then turns to Adrian, saying he's done for. But to her surprise, they both get shoved down the roof. Kyle rushes to her and tries waking her up but to no avail. Suddenly, Noah reaches for his face and cheekily asks if he is worried. Kyle becomes shocked and asks if it's funny to her. He embraces her, to which she apologizes for making him worried. He sulks, knowing he just watched the situation unfold like a fool and did nothing to protect her. He tells her he'll take a look at Adrian and leaves. Noah senses the weird vibe and wonders if he's mad. Kyle spots an unconscious Adrian, and he asks Noah if something happened to Adrian while he isn't there. Noah reveals that she saw a lot of replica subjects in the hotel, discovered a room, and read his diary. Kyle reveals that this Adrian is the real one, but Noah says the one on the first floor seemed real to her. They then make their way to the capital, but to Noah's dismay, Kyle is still avoiding her and has even booked a different cabin for himself. That night, she makes her way out to find him. She does, and they return to her cabin. They watch Mule sleep, and Noah remarks that she thought Kyle was angry at her. He apologizes and confesses that he felt powerless back then. He confesses that he never thought of himself like this, but when she was in danger back then, he couldn't do anything at all or even ask Mule to help. Noah reassures him, saying she can just protect him from now on, and take his hand, shocking him. They lean closer together but immediately pull away as Mule wakes up. He pretends to sleep again, but Noah asks him not to. Kyle takes his leave, and Noah gives him Adrian's diary. In the process, a page fell out. Suddenly, something comes out of it, making them wonder what it is. Noah begins to feel something alive inside the bottle as if it were someone's soul. Both their eyes widen in realization. The scene switches to the train arriving at the capital. Lenia and Harold residents had numerous health problems, including skin damage and respiratory problems. They are currently receiving treatment, and nobody was injured by the fire. Harold and the surrounding villages were said to be severely polluted, so wizards were dispatched to clean the area. Upon arriving, Kyle entrusts Mule and Noah with Penelope, as he is going to be busy for the next few days. Penelope drives them to a Leonard family-owned mansion and asks them to make themselves comfortable. Penelope then smiles, saying it's been a while to meet Noah. Noah becomes surprised, realizing she knew it was her. She had found this out since Mule was following her, the Dragon Master. They sat down to have a meal, and Penelope asked if she was in a relationship with the chief. Noah begins to sulk, saying she doesn't know. She reveals that she confessed, but Kyle didn't really give her an answer. Penelope assures her that the chief never treats anyone like he does her, and it's clear she's special to him. She suggests Noah go in a little stronger, to which she remarks that she's being a little too excited. Noah was soon issued a temporary ID by the Laurent government, but the information spread through the city that the dragon has a new master and that its original owner, Elinor Essel's, whereabouts are unknown. Even Kyle's subordinate wanted to meet her, but Kyle doesn't answer him, and he teases him for liking her. He disagrees, to which the subordinate says Noah's hair is on his uniform. Kyle quickly becomes alert and starts looking for it, causing the subordinate to laugh. The subordinate leaves and meets Penelope on the way. He asks her about Noah and whether she's pretty. Penelope recalls her memories with Noah and agrees. Meanwhile, Lenia is being interrogated about the replica research. She reveals everything she knew about the research but refuses to answer whether she knew that the research was being conducted on humans until her lawyer arrives. The scene switches to Noah meeting Kyle after a long time. 
She remarks that though it's been a week, without him, it felt longer. Her words cause Kyle's heart to pound louder, and he alerts his eyes. They discuss Lenia's interrogation, and Kyle reveals she claims to have invested without full knowledge of the experiment, and thus it will be difficult for her to avoid punishment. Noah wonders how Lenia got along with Elinora, but Kyle reveals their relationship wasn't romantic. Elinor Russell is someone who went to great lengths just to get an advantage to win Voltaller's family investment, and so she psychologically manipulated Lenia. This makes Noah remember how she must have done the same to Adrian. She tells Kyle what he said and confesses that she felt the same at some point. Kyle assures her she deserves to be loved, but Adrian himself wants to be someone like Elinora. Noah, whom he has seen, doesn't torment others like that and is rather a caring person. Touched by his words, she immediately hugs him, taking Kyle aback. She then asks about Adrian, to which Kyle hesitatingly reveals he attempted suicide and is uncooperative with the investigation, shocking Noah. Kyle then changes the topic and asks her if Adrian can be returned to his original state since he split into two. Noah ponders, saying she doesn't know for sure and will have to meet him with Mule. They bump into Kyle's subordinate acting as Mule's horse, and he asks Kyle for help. Kyle recalls the subordinates teasing and ignores him as revenge. The scene switches to Mule telling Kyle and Noah that Adrian can be turned back into one person. But for that, his will is important. Kyle reveals that it was difficult then and reveals how Adrian's two halves are different. One seems to be more aggressive and hates Elinor, while the other is on the quieter side with no will to live. That night, Noah remembers a woman who gave her food to eat, concerned with her declining health but she can't seem to remember the woman's face. The next day, Noah goes to see Adrian and wonders how to make him healthy again. Adrian's subordinates are also present, and they reveal how Adrian tried killing himself multiple times before, too, whenever his relationship with Elinora got tough. Hearing this, Noah decides to try talking to him. She approaches him and reveals she came back to turn him into one person but can't since he's so weak. She asks him to have some food. Adrian remains quiet for a moment and then asks her to stop lying, as she just wants to quietly dispose of him. He asks if she really thought he would cooperate if she said that and asks her not to lie. Noah finds her previous self in Adrian. She remarks that she'll try waking Elinora soon, as she finds the vial containing her soul. She confesses that she was doing this for her sake and asks if he doesn't want to meet her. She turns away, saying it looks like he doesn't want to. However, Adrian asks her to stop and says he wants to see her. Noah reveals she never lied, and everyone was worried about him. She makes him promise to eat well, and he agrees. She pats him on the head and leaves. She later tells Kyle this, saying she can't help but think how much he resembles her. If she hadn't met kind people as well, she might have also ended up like Adrian. And so Kyle agrees with her decision. Later, Noah is informed that Adrian is no longer skipping his meals, causing her to sigh in relief. She then asks Mule to take her there again. It has been seven days since they returned Elinora's soul to her body. They tried to wake her up today, too. She finally does wake up to their shock. She instantly attacks them, but Noah stops her magic. Elinora asks who she is and what this place is. She notices how the woman and the dragon have been imprinted. She also notices how weak her body is and wonders if her experiment failed. Noah reveals she woke her up so she could pay for her sins. But Elinora states it was more of a blessing for the maggots, the primitives who pretended to be intelligent, and enjoyed the civilization developed by talented people like her when they themselves could not think of anything. Elinora strikes a deal with her to give her the dragon power while she gives her the ability and knowledge. However, Noah refuses and backs away, intimidated by her. Elinora tries guessing her problems and ends up asking if she loves a guy. Seeing the obvious expression on Noah's face, she promises to make the guy fall for her. However, to Elinora's surprise, Noah refuses to listen to her crap. She confiscates her magical abilities, angering her, and she vows to kill her. But Noah wasn't phased in the slightest. About a week later, the halves of Adrian's divided soul were put back in his original body. Though Adrian's appeal for a meeting with Elinora was rejected, the king gave special respect to Noah and allowed them to meet from a distance. Adrian is shocked when he sees Elinora and is relieved. He notices she isn't wearing a mana blocker device, to which Noah reveals she can no longer use magic as she confiscated it. She then asks Adrian if he's angry or afraid. He says he isn't angry but has finally come to realize that they wished for something they shouldn't have in the first place, and perhaps her loss of magical ability will be a fresh start for her. Meanwhile, Elinora is still shocked to realize she can never use magic and has to love as other insignificant, 
dumb humans do. She vows to kill everyone involved in doing this to her repeatedly. Later, the postman delivers Elinora's letters to her lawyer. He reads them and heads out with his suitcase. He sits on a bench, and when another woman sits beside him, he leaves. The suitcase he left behind is taken by the woman, who reads how Elinora wants her to take care of the dragon. She decides not to do so, but Kyle Leonard, on the other hand, is manageable. Meanwhile, Kyle drops Mule and Noah home. He hesitatingly asks why she cares so much about Adrian and reminds her of all the cruel things he did. Noah says it's true, but he's psychologically manipulated by a leaner. However, Kyle says he isn't a child and bitterly asks what makes her pity him. He begins to take his leave, not wanting to listen to her feeble excuses. The scene switches to Penelope staring at a rather sullen Noah. Upon asking about the chief's whereabouts, Penelope accidentally reveals his formal meeting with a marriage prospect, which happens every year. Soon, a letter arrives from the emperor for Noah, inviting her to the palace. She does as requested. The emperor can't help but notice how gloomy she is. She asks why he called her here, to which he reveals he wants her to become a citizen of Laurent and promises to build her a mansion in Accra. She decides to think about it, as she isn't sure because of a personal issue. The emperor asks her to enlighten him so he can help her. She then reveals that the person she likes despises her. The emperor cheekily assures her that there are many handsome men here. He asks her to consider this from a different angle and to choose to stay with the people she loves. Indeed, she wasn't the only one tormented by love. Kyle couldn't focus on his work. He can't help but reflect on his past actions. At the Leonard Manor, his brother notices something off about him. The matchmaking dinner soon starts, and sensing the awkward atmosphere, his brother leaves. On his way, he is informed that a young lady and a child have come to meet Kyle, but he is shocked to learn that the child is actually the dragon. Meanwhile, Lady Leanne requests to speak to Kyle privately, and they head to the drawing room. She then reveals that she is also pushed by her parents for this and isn't interested, just like him. He leads her to his room and begins to rest. Meanwhile, Leanne spreads gas in the room. It causes Kyle to not wake up. He immediately senses the smell of lilac, a hallucinogen, and he opens his eyes. He avoids Leanne's attack, but she ends up knocking him out with the gas. He remembers Noah and wonders if that was his last time seeing her. If he'd known it was, he wouldn't have gotten mad at her. Noah senses he's in danger and teleports to his room instantly. Kyle, on the other hand, manages to break free from the woman's hold. Before she can attack him again, she notices Noah by his side, demanding to know what she has done to him. Noah attacks her with magic, torturing her again and again. She remarks that she wants to kill her, but Kyle wouldn't want that. She opens the room door as Kyle's brother constantly knocks on the door. The woman is captured, and Kyle is tended to. He wakes up to find Noah by his side. She instantly embraces him but backs away, deciding to leave. However, Kyle stops her and asks about the incident. She reveals that Alina was the one who commissioned the assassination. Kyle then apologizes to her for what he said earlier. He confesses he hated how she treated Adrian so kindly and was jealous, probably because he loves her. Shocked, she asks if he really just said he loved her. He admits that Noah takes his hand in hers. They get interrupted as Kyle's brother storms in, saying he brought three cups of blueberry ice cream for Mule. He notices Kyle has woken up, and Noah is by his side, with both acting awkwardly. The trial successfully concluded with Adrian being sentenced to eight years in prison and 30,000 hours of community service. Elinor was sentenced to death but is said to be serving a life sentence in an undersea prison in reality. Her assets and fortune were set to be used to restore the lives of her victims, and the rest to put toward the state. The assassin who attempted to kill Kyle was arrested, but authorities found it hard to track down Ulam. Noah bids goodbye to a sullen Adrian while Kyle consoles her. For a good while, the capital was abuzz with the news that the Dragon Master would become a citizen of Laurent. Noah was thus entrusted with the task of restoring the natural order of Harrel and was compensated accordingly. The scene switches to Mule and Noah returning to the capital by train. This makes Noah recall all the times she traveled with Kyle and Mule. They soon arrive and are greeted by Kyle. He asks why she didn't come via magic, to which she confesses that she wanted to go on the train. He drives them to their new home, and Mule instantly rushes to his new room. Until now, Noah had been living either at Elinora's house or wherever Kyle arranged. But this was her house. Kyle begins to take his leave, but Noah tells him that since there's room for him too, he should come often. Kyle smiles and agrees. They then decide to go out for food, with Mule happily clinging to Kyle, hoping to get dessert. This marks the beginning of Noah and Kyle's new journey. And with this, the manwa ends.